Hello students, in the last class we had completed animals characteristics and classification. We had divided them into vertebrates and invertebrates and we had seen the features of each one of the vertebrates. In today's class we are going to start with animal and their adaptations. Now what is adaptation? Adaptation is any specific feature of an animal that enables it to better suit its surroundings. For example, compare the fishes and the birds. The fishes live in the water while the birds have a flight character. So what kind of adaptations do the fishes have which enable them to be better suited for that kind of aquatic lifestyle, they have scales on their body to protect themselves from water, they, their shape, their streamlined body shape, their fins, etc. Their pre presence of gills which enable them to absorb the dissolved gases in the water. These are the adaptations that they have evolved over time which enable them to better suit their environment that they are in. On the contrary, the birds have wings, a very lightweight body isn't it hollow bones presence of hollow bones which make them which make their body very lightweight presence of wings a presence of a beak these are the adaptations which enable them to be better suited for the flight character isn't it so likewise every animal that you see around you will have certain specific features okay which they have evolved over time which will allow them to be better suited for the environment that they are living in such specific features that the animals have evolved over time these are called as adaptations right so this is what we're going to look at let us write down the definition of adaptations so adaptations we can say Specific features of living organisms which enable them to be better suited to their environment. Right? Now, these adaptations which the animals have acquired they could be they could be uh, they could have arised in the animals to suit their habitat like how we discussed just now the fishes and the birds but they may not be necessarily for habitat all the time they may be for acquiring food specifically right for example compare the beaks of um, the duck and the eagle compare the beaks of the duck and the eagle the eagle is uh, is an animal of uh, is a bird of prey right what about the duck the duck feeds uh, from the water it scoops out uh, uh, fishes from the water isn't it so is there is their beak similar not at all right the beak of the uh, the beak of the duck is very flat broad it has some holes on here to filter out the water so the water will just come out and uh, the fish will remain inside right so that that kind of a beak it has on the contrary the eagle the bird of prey it has a very sharp pointy beak isn't it which would uh, which it will use for tearing the flesh of the animal that it has preyed upon right so the habit the adaptations can also can not only be to suit the habitat but it can also be the adaptations may also come in animals to to suit the feeding habits of animals right what else can the adaptation be for apart from habitat and feeding habit which can help them in feeding what else can the adaptations be they can be for protection they can be for protection of the animal from enemies for example camouflage you know camouflage right you know stick insect why does the stick insect has this adaptation the stick insect has adapted itself to look so much like a stick 
so why has it adapted itself in that manner so that it can escape from its prey isn't it you will you will not even notice that it is there what about the leaf insect it looks just like a leaf right camouflage also mimicry these are the adaptations that the animals have acquired for protection from the prey so are you understanding for what purposes the adaptations may be acquired by the animals the adaptations so let us list them down one by one types of adaptations adaptations may be for habitat the adaptations may be for acquiring food the adaptations may be for protection for protection from enemies from predators apart from this there are other types of adaptations also for example hibernation migration which we're going to look at we're going to look at each of these adaptations that the animals have acquired for habitat what are the different adaptations in different kinds of habitats we just discussed two examples of the fish and the bird which is having flight character but there are different types of habitats the animals living in the mountains will have different kinds of adaptations the animals living in the plains will have still other adaptations animals living in the grasslands will have still other adaptations polar regions will have animals with different kind of adaptations so we're going to all look at them in this section in this class we're going to look at all the adaptations of animals for habitat to suit their habitat in the next classes we are going to look at the adaptations of animals for acquiring food next we will be looking at the adaptations for animals for protection from animals uh, from protection from predators and then we will look at hibernation and migration cool so let us look at the adaptations of animals for habitat adaptations of animals to habitat Now you see what is a first of all what is the meaning of a habitat habitat is a place where the animal lives throughout its life right so habitats can be of different types isn't it so we are going to list all these habitats first of all what are the different habitats you have the terrestrial habitat and in terrestrial habitat you have different types of terrestrial habitats for example polar regions what else deserts then mountain regions what else plains fine apart from terrestrial habitat what are the types of habitats do you know of aquatic habitat aquatic habitat means what water right what are the habitat you have both land as well as water both land and water is yet another type of habitat that some animals have apart from this there is the arboreal arboreal means dwelling on trees and then finally you have the aerial habitat aerial habitat is the one that you have in the air so in this class we're going to look at the adaptations to these different kinds of habitats fine so let us begin with the adaptations to terrestrial habitat and within terrestrial habitat we will look at each one of these let us start with polar regions so first of all tell me how is the climate in the polar regions is it really cold or is it really hot it's snow capped okay it's covered with snow covered with snow extremely cold Some examples of animals found in polar regions are 
the polar bear who else who else is found penguin any other you can think of that is the seal walrus albatrosses this is a bird where are the polar regions found so for instance this is the earth this is the equator there is the imaginary line axis this is the north pole this is the south pole north pole and south pole right the region that is there around the north pole is called as the arctic region region around the south pole is called as the antarctic region both arctic region and antarctic region comprise of the polar regions now in this section we are going to look at the characteristic features or adaptations of two animals polar bear and penguin in more detail the polar bear is found in the arctic region okay you can make a note over here this is found in the arctic region and this is found in the antarctic region the polar bear you have seen a polar bear haven't you how is it it has a big body its body is covered with white fur which is very thick which helps it to keep it warm body covered with thick hair thick fur okay keeps it warm next what else it has padded feet which enables it to walk on the snow next is the penguin so what are the characteristic features of the penguin is penguin a mammal or a bird this one is a mammal okay to iski body is covered with fur you understand that why its body is covered with fur it's a mammal okay how about the penguin its body will not will its body be covered with fur also no because it's not a mammal okay it has a beak and all right it's not a mammal it's a bird a bird have you seen it fly no it's a flightless bird okay it does not have wings as such but it has instead it has these paddles with which it will uh, which it will use for swimming okay very nicely it's a very good swimmer uses its flippers which are the modified wings modified four limbs clear and how does it keep itself warm if it does not have fur so they will keep very close to each other they will uh, sit very close to one another to keep their bodies warm apart from that polar bear and penguin also have presence of uh, blubber under their skin you know what is blubber blubber is a layer of fat underneath the skin to keep themselves warm okay so this also has a thick fur plus it also has blubber also has blubber okay for the same reason even this one has blubber okay to keep warm right so these were the adaptations of two animals living in the polar regions next we move on to adaptations of animals living in deserts right when i talk about desert what comes to your mind you think of these sand dunes and camels walking like that isn't it with people riding on their backs in a line like that isn't it any other animal you can think of have you seen in the desert yes there are different animals that live in the desert okay how is the weather in the in the desert it's really in the hot desert it's really hot there are cold deserts as well but we are not doing cold deserts in this 
case you are doing the hot deserts and the animal adaptations in the hot deserts right apart from camel which are the other animals there are different types of snakes you must have seen rattle snakes and all in discovery channel who else there are there is uh, there are rats there are there are scorpions different types of insects are present right lizards so all these are adapted to live in so all these are adapted to live in the desert conditions desert animals okay example camel you have that scorpions snakes there is one called as kangaroo rat that lives in the deserts remember this name okay is there in 12th standard in ncert remember this okay lizards okay different types of insects how is the weather in the desert high temperature hot during day hmm? it's hot during very hot during day time but but very cold during night did you know this in the night time it is quite cold extremely cold in fact okay because the land tends to lose its heat very quickly right okay so uh, in this section we are going to look at all the characteristic features and the adaptations of this beautiful animal that is the camel okay you know how how camel it's called as the ship of the desert all of you have seen the camel haven't you what are the different features that it has tell me one by one hmm yes first of all it has very thick skin right thick skin for protection from what does it protect from protection from heat or sun from hot sun that's right what else very long legs have you seen it it has long legs long legs keeps the body away from away from what away from the hot sand agree yes what else it has padded feet padded feet for what reason padded feet which will enable it to walk on sand correct apart from that it has long eyelashes how will this help hmm long eyelashes protects what protects the eyes correct it can close its nostrils whenever it want can close its nostrils during sandstorms is that all no there are many other features for example have you noticed the hum has a hum what is this hum it has a hum on its back what is it what is, what does it have it has stored fat okay it has stored fat inside it and it can go on for many many days without food and water as well it will use up the fat that is stored in the hump okay as a source of energy and the same fat can also generate water for it okay fat oxidation can generate water did you know this so it can go on without food as well as water for many days or ek bar usko ek bar usko uh, once it gets water it will drink lots of water up till even 200 liters in one go fine 
so we have to write can go on without food plus water for many days can drink up to 200 liters of water when it is available so these were the characteristic adaptations of camel what about the other animals these are really small animals this this should be the biggest animal that is found in the desert the others are really small animals so what most they do not have most of these features like hump and everything so what kind of adaptations they usually show is that they show behavioral adaptations what are behavioral adaptations so they you know in the deserts it's really hot during the daytime and really cold at night right so what will these little creatures do will they come out during daytime or will they prefer to come out when it is not so hot that is during dawn or dusk what do you think in the night it is extremely cold so what times the temperature will be just about right during the dawn time and the dusk time okay when the sun is just about to come when the when it is nice and warm outside not cold not really hot also is just about nice that time they will come out that is during the dawn time and also during the dusk time when the sun is setting and it's starting to get cold but not really cold okay so during dawn and dusk they are going to come out when the temperature is just right for them so such kind of adaptations are shown by the other animals okay you can just make a note here that they become active during dawn or during dusk sunrise sunset clear so with that we have completed the adaptations of animals living in deserts so what are the other habitats other terrestrial habitats apart from polar regions and desert regions so we have other terrestrial habitats like the mountain regions and the plains which we have to cover now so let's start with the adaptations of animals living in the mountain regions right right so what are mountain regions mountain regions these are areas which are high above the sea level such places are called mountain regions these are at high altitudes such places are at high altitudes how is the climate and the weather conditions it is quite very cool very cold temperatures it in fact snows in winters coarse grasses grow in summers coarse means what very rough dry sort of grasses okay okay most important thing to know is that the oxygen levels of such places is quite less okay oxygen content is very less because because such places are at a higher altitude no the atmosphere will be thickest at the sea level as you go higher and higher ab uh, above on the at higher altitudes the atmosphere thickness is going to become thinner 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 okay and uh, as such the oxygen and the other gases also are going to become very less concentrated okay so oxygen content is very less at high altitudes and such places will be rocky stiff slopes etc so what will be the adaptations of such animals living in the mountain regions first of all what are the who are these animals so we have animals like the animals like mountain goat okay then you have sheep you have the yak you have the yeti you know yeti right just joking no no yeti i don't know what that is okay you have the mules 
okay these are the adapt these are the uh, animals living in the mountain regions so what are the adaptations let's look at the adaptation of this animal called mountain goat so let us list its characteristic features it has double coated fur hmm? double coated fur it has which will pro which will provide it protection from protection from cold okay also this fur that it has it is white in winters okay it is white in winters but brownish gray in summers can you tell me what is the logic behind this why is it brownish gray during summers and white in winters because in in winters it snows so their coat is white in color for a camouflage effect to protect itself from the predators and during winters uh, so, sorry during summers when the snow melts and coarse grasses grow which are brownish in color right their coat also changes to the same color for camouflage effect for protection from predators clear next feature how do you think their legs will be will they be very well developed or will they be just like the normal animals that you see on the plains they will be extra well developed why because they have to climb the rocky terrains very stiff uh, slopes etc so they need to have a good grip okay so such kind of paddings and all will be there isn't it so they have well developed will develop leg muscles okay to climb rocky mountains rocky slopes isn't it how about their respiratory system what do you think their respiratory system will be will it be more developed or less developed than the other ordinary animals that you see around you will it be more developed or less developed it will be more developed why because as it is oxygen will be very less at higher altitudes so whatever little oxygen they have over there available they have to take it all and make the best you best possible use of it isn't it so their respiratory system is going to be well developed okay for this is applicable for all these animals their respiratory system even their digestive system is well developed can you justify because all they have at the rocky terrains are coarse grasses they do not have very lush vegetation on top so whatever coarse grasses they are able to eat they need to derive maximum nutrition out of it so that will be possible when they have a good well developed digestive system so this is these are their adaptations so overall these are the adaptations of the animals living in the mountain regions clear finally we move on to the last terrestrial habitat that is the plains plains what kind of regions are plains plains are flatlands right plains means what flatlands and they have nice good moderate type of climate it's neither too hot nor too cold moderate climate means what and all these animals like you have the horse then you have cat dog tiger lion elephant all these animals are found in the plains isn't it they have uh, the features which will allow them to live comfortably in the moderate type of climate okay nothing fancy they have the general features right out of these horse cat dog these are these can be domesticated as well these are domesticated animals and tiger elephant these are wild animals okay so with that we have completed with the adaptations of animals of terrestrial habitats okay so now 
we have to move on to the adaptations of animals found in the other habitats other than terrestrial okay so other than terrestrial habitat you have four other habitats remaining that is the aquatic habitat you have the amphibians then you have the arboreal habitat that is on the trees and the aerial habitat right so let us do the remaining four adaptations of animals of aquatic habitat of aquatic habitat what is the meaning of aquatic habitat means water animals living in water what are the animals living in water give examples you have the fish then you have octopus who else you have the crab mammals like dolphins whale seahorse etc right turtle isn't it now for discussing the adaptations of animals of aquatic habitat we are going to consider the most common animal that is the fish what are the adaptations of the fish you have seen a fish isn't haven't you how is the shape of its body narrow at the beginning narrow at the end right such kind of a shape is called streamlined shape streamlined body okay why it enables it to cut through water to cut through water next its body is covered with such kind of transparent thingies what are they called body covered with scales such transparent things are called scales what are scales these are things that cover their body the fishes body all types of fishes it is presented they provided protection makes their body waterproof they do not allow water to enter in their body neither does it allow water to exit okay scales makes body waterproof makes your body waterproof next what are these these are fins and what kind of fin is this called this is called a tail fin why do they have fins fins enable swimming also for maintaining balance the tail fin is used for steering and changing directions did you know this tail fin helps change direction clear how do they breathe under water do they have lungs like the terrestrial animals most of these terrestrial animals had lungs they breathe air through nose nostrils do they also breathe air through nostrils hmm? no they have gills presence of gills which are there located over here in this region in the throat region they are called gills gills are present for breathing okay all fishes have gills for breathing fine except for one type of fish except that is one exception to this exception is this fish called as lung fish because it is called lung fish because it has lungs instead of gills that all the other fishes have gills but this one has lungs can you tell me what do you think it's a significance it could be an ancestor okay a grandparent of probably amphibians because amphibians have lungs don't they 
Amphibians are said to have evolved from fishes and reptiles are known to have evolved from amphibians further down the line, right? Fishes were in water, amphibians came out of water, right? But partly they also were dependent on water as well. That's why land as well as water, right? Reptiles are wholly terrestrial, isn't it? Hmm? So amphibians are known to have evolved from fishes and this particular fish, lungfish, is known to have lungs. So is it possible that it could be a primitive ancestor of these amphibians? Hmm? Amphibians may have evolved from such kind of lungfishes? Probably, okay? Lungfish has lungs and can breathe out of water, can remain out of water for a long time. For a long time. How about how about these aquatic animals like dolphin and whale? Do they also have gills? No. Why? Because they are not fishes. Dolphin and whale are not fishes. By the way, fishes are fishes. Okay, fish is a type of vertebrate. All these animals over here cannot be called as fishes. All the aquatic, all the animals living in water are not called as fishes. Fine. You have specific type of vertebrates called a fish. Apart from that, you have dolphins and whales, which may have this particular shape, streamlined body, but they are not called fishes. They are mammals. Okay. These are mammals. So they will not have any of these features of the fishes. They will not have gills. Do not have gills. What do they have then? They have lungs. Okay. So if they have lungs, they need to have nostrils to breathe in air. But with nostrils like that, they will not be able to breathe underwater. So what do they have? They have the nostril is placed on top over here like that. Okay. And they have that hole is called blow hole. You must have seen some pictures and all of the whales and all shooting spurts of water above their head, right? So that is the blow hole. They will come to the surface and breathe in air breathe out as well fine they have blow blow holes these are mammals so their body is obviously not going to be covered with scales etc fine what about the octopus and crab what are these if these are fishes those are mammals octopus and crabs these are invertebrates these are aquatic invertebrates you have the invertebrates and the vertebrates and in vertebrates we have the fishes amphibians reptiles birds mammals right so these are the invertebrate aquatic animals and in vertebrates you have the fish you have the mammals you also have reptiles which is the reptile here this is a reptile a reptile that is aquatic cool fine So with that we complete the adaptations of animals of aquatic habitat. Moving on to the next one. Next adaptations of amphibians. Amphi means both. Both what? Hmm? Both what? They live in both land as well as water. Okay, they live on land as well as water. Examples, you have the frog, you have the toad, salamander. These are the common examples and we're going to look at the adaptations with respect to the frog. Do you know of any adaptations of the frog? So it lives in water, is part of its life cycle is spent in the water, part of its life cycle is spent on land, isn't it? The eggs are in water, the tadpole that comes out is in water and then it will grow into an adult which will be on the land most of the times, right? Which will come in and out of water, on and off, isn't it? That's how a frog is. So when in water, the adaptations, the, you know the tadpole, 
द टेड पोल हैज गिल्स ओके एंड वेन इट ग्रोज इन टू अ फ्रॉग एन एडल्ट फ्रॉग द एडल्ट फ्रॉग इज गोइंग टू हैव लंग्स so this guy is going to breathe through its gills and this guy will breathe through its lungs and also through its moist skin okay the moist skin will be used under water also it can be it will be able to breathe through its moist skin under water as well their feet is going to be webbed okay isn't it like that right for what webbed feet for swimming apart from that they have strong hind limbs they have very strong hind limbs for swimming for jumping as well as swimming so these are the adaptations of amphibians frog toad salamander common amphibians fine Moving on to the next habitat, that is arboreal habitat. Arboreal. What is arboreal? Arboreal means on trees. Adaptations of animals of arboreal habitat. These animals dwell on. trees can you name some examples of animals commonly you have the monkey correct apart from that you have the squirrel whales orangutans orangutans whales chameleon etc what do you think will be their most specific feature what will be the most developed there their limbs are going to be the most well developed this is strong limbs with strong claws to hold on to the branches isn't it because they need maximum grip for climbing onto the branches they have strong limbs with sharp claws to climb branches or to cling on to branches isn't it in many of these animals the tail can also help in balancing also helps to helps in gripping gripping means catching hold of these are the adaptations of animals living in the arboreal habitat Have you seen the monkeys they can climb using their tail also only tail okay such strong uh, help is offered by their tails how do you think uh, uh, using trees as uh, as a habitat will help them it will it will protect them from the predators isn't it they'll be able to run swiftly on the trees come down only for food and then climb on top for as a habitat they can stay on they'll be much safer there isn't it yes next finally we have the last habitat that is the air adaptations of animals living in air of adaptations of animals of aerial habitat adaptations of animals of aerial habitat aerial matlab kya air so which are the animals of aerial habitat you have birds all the birds and even bats isn't it you have certain insects also that fly but never mind we are not doing the adaptations of invertebrates theek okay? hai we are doing only of these birds and bats so tell me the adaptations of the birds What do you know about the birds? What adaptations do they have to fly in the air? Is their body really heavy? No, their body is really light. 
lightweight body will it help yes it will help them to fly easily in air so how do they make their body so lightweight their bones are going to be are going to be hollow their bones are hollow almost like a sponge have you seen their bones they are almost like sponge okay they have hollow bones hollow bones are also called as pneumatic bones okay pneumatic bones this is a technical term for somewhat level 2 type okay hollow bones so how does it help it makes your body makes body very lightweight because if they had bones as dense as ours their body would be quite heavy not a feature of the flightless birds though they will not have hollow bones okay hmm? then what else body is covered with feathers covered with feathers feathers for what feathers also help to make their body light makes body light also it makes keeps them warm it helps to keep them warm right next in fishes they had fins for swimming and balancing what about these guys they have they are four limbs four limbs means the front limbs modified into wings are the back limbs are the hind limbs also modified into wings no only the four limbs are modified into wings the front okay four limbs modified into two wings wings for what for flying they also have a tail tail will have to helps to change direction just like in fishes where also how is the shape of their body hmm? how is the shape of the body narrow at both ends so that is called a streamlined shape body is streamlined because even they need to cut through isn't it cut through air while flying so, what about the bat is bat a bird no bird is a bird bat is a bat is a mammal so it will not have feathers and all so four limbs will be modified into wings right and they will have skin stretched between their toes okay which will enable it to fly right skin stretched between toes so which will form will form wings for flying okay this is a mammal that can fly here yeah. would it lay eggs does it lay eggs no birds lay eggs mammals do not lay eggs clear so with that we have completed the adaptations of animals for habitat we also have adaptations of animals for for eating food different types of adaptations for gathering and eating food we also have adaptations of animals for protection against enemies which we will be doing in the next classes so all this was adaptation of animals with respect to to suit them to live in different types of habitats thank you